Hi, I'm Antoine Fuqua, and today I'm going to break down a scene for you from Equalizer 3. You like being in other people's business. I'm really beginning to like this place and the people. I'm starting to believe from the bottom of my heart that this is where I'm supposed to be. So, whatever it is that you and your friends do, please do it somewhere else. Well, you know, in the first one, we talked a lot about Robert finding a purpose in Equalizer 1. And Denzel created that sort of wandering character who was sort of trying to find his place there. And in 2, he was making peace of his past. He was trying to make peace of his past, his wife dying, his friends betraying him, and the loss of Susan, uh, Melissa Leo's character. And in this one, he's trying to find a place for himself in the world to just settle down and find peace. So the character's on that journey along the way. And of course, in Equalizer 3, uh, it starts off, he's in a little darker place. And so that's when he starts to question and contemplate the revenge he takes on these guys. Is it for himself or is it still for the people he's helping? He has to pause to think about that for a moment. I think Robert F McCall found himself a bit thrown back in time. When you go to those places like the Trani in Italy and people who have been there know, it's all old world. You know, the, all the buildings are built into the mountains. It's very classic and simple. And I think that it gave him a certain peace being there, you know, right next to the Mediterranean. And um, it makes you sort of slow down and take a step back in time, a simpler time in life. It's a fishing village. You live and die on the sea. Very, there's no cars. I mean, there are very few going up the narrow roads. Kids play soccer right there in the, in the piazza. You know, the priests are still there with the church. The church is above everything, so sort of like always present. It's a very spiritual place. And Denzel used to get up early in the morning, like four in the morning, just to watch the sunrise over the, over the sea you know, every day. You warning me? I'm preparing you. I got real good at this, though. It's just stopping but I'm very sympathetic. <laughs> He's trying really, really hard not to get involved with the situation. So through that pain smile, you know, it's like, I gave him a chance. <laughs> you know, he's like, okay. He's sort of like, the monster in him is coming out. You know, that's what that's about. He's like, I gave him a chance. Okay. So he's gonna show him what it's like to, you know, face a bully bigger than you, badder than you. You have to think about it like, Sharks in the water. If you're on the beach with your family and it's a beautiful day and the kids are all in the water and then a shark shows up, you know, the restaurant scene, you got family, food, music playing, trying to have a nice meal, some vino, and then the bad guys come in, right? And all of a sudden the whole room sort of changes, the energy changes. It's not so safe in the water, it's not safe in the restaurant, right? That's the way I sort of approach it. There's sharks in the water. They smell blood and they come. And But they, what they don't know is there's a bigger shark, you know, sitting across from them, which they're about to meet. Is that a Timex? No. It's a big <laughs> Well, McCall asked Marco, is that a Timex? I mean, obviously it's a play on time. It's also, you know, he knows it's not a Timex. He just wants the guy to put himself in a position that he puts himself in. And um, of course, McCall takes the, uh, the medium nerve, which happened to me before, and it's very painful, you know? And so that scene creates great tension because it's a simple device that causes great pain. And it's like tension, it just holds the tension, you know? So creating tension up close and personal like that, you know, instead of a big event, moment where the tables are flipping and things like that. It's a simple thing that's very effective if someone's in that position, you know? So that to me is putting pressure on someone. The whole scene is about putting pressure on Marco, turning the tables on Marco. He comes into the scene to put pressure on uh, Gio, the cop. When he looks over at McCall, the whole scene turns and McCall decides to put the pressure on Marco, see how he, how he likes how that feels. Right, of course it doesn't feel so, so good. 
Yeah, so, yeah, but the medium nerve gag, actually, a friend of mine did that to me once. Very painful. Guys that know how to do it know how to do it. A friend of mine who's a Navy SEAL, I think when I was doing Tears of the Sun, he did it to me to show me, and oh my God, man. You drop to your knees. <laughs> I mean, you're totally submissive. Right there. Right there. What's the time of that's the median nerve that I'm compressing. On a scale from one to ten, that's a two. That's a three. You don't want me to go to four. I go to four, you shit on yourself. You don't want that. I don't want that. They don't want that. Denzel works with the stunt guys and works with uh, Andreas, who played Marco. You know, we just kind of block it out and talk it through. And again, when I do an action scene, to me, it's like dialogue. So there's a, a dialogue back and forth between him and Marco. It's just physical, right? So we block it that way. Denzel's totally committed. I mean, completely, totally committed. When he's on the set, he's that character. He's, you know, he does his homework long before he gets on the set. But he's an actor first. If you told Denzel you're a movie star, he doesn't want to hear that. He's an actor. That's why he does theater and things like that. It's like, what makes Michael Jordan Michael Jordan? You know, what makes the greats great at anything? They're just totally committed. And then part of them, they're just special individuals. Some of them were born to do just that. And that Denzel is one of them. He has that presence. You have to have that presence. There are some actors that just have that gravitas, that presence. And that's what you get with Denzel. He's very intense. Even on the set when we're filming, he's very intense. So, you know, if you're another actor in front of Denzel, yeah, you know, you <laughs> you better be ready. Tell your compadres that they can leave. Tell them to beat it. Maria! Maria! <laughs> ah! It's an actual restaurant in, uh, on the Amalfi Coast uh, in Atrani. All those are real locations. Those are all, I think we had maybe two sets maybe on the stage, but those are all locations. That's in Rome, Amalfi Coast, and Atrani, which is the town we use, and Naples. This one is more of a, I like to say, a working man's hero, a common person's hero. He's not fancy in any way. Everything in it is doable if you know how to do it, you know, if that's what you do for a living. There's very little fanfare in the action. It's more up close and personal and brutal in a very real way. And I think that's what separates the equalizer, that it's, uh, he's a common guy and he doesn't do it for any glory or fame. You, you know, he's the guy next door. I hope each film I get better. You know, certainly each film I grow and learn some things about myself as a filmmaker, as a person. I know for sure I want to make a film without violence next. You know, uh, I've learned, I'm getting older now, I have children. So you, you, you start to see the world a little different. It's fun to do, it's exciting for the audience, but you know, I think I've, um, I'm ready for another chapter. <laughs>